You know, I, I, all my other scriptures are already in there, but put this one up here for us, Psalms 103. Put the whole psalm up there. And we'll just read that together. <coughs> if I need anything else, I'll just hum. No, that's okay. <laughs> Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Yes. Oh, I got it. Okay. Well, maybe I need to turn it on. That's what's happening. Okay. <laughs> Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. No, I didn't want Psalm 103. I want Psalms 3. Pardon me. That's a good one, but that ain't the one I want. Psalms 3. This is our theme song. This is how we're going through this ordeal we're going through with Psalm 3. And it'll help you. There it is. How are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be would say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. Silah. Silah means think about it. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, yes. my glory, and the lifter of my head. I cried unto the Lord, and that's what we're doing. Yes. With my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill, Silla. Yes. I laid me down, and I slept, and I awakened, for the Lord had sustained me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that set themselves against me round about. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for thou hast smitten all mine enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people. Salah. Amen. Blessed be the God. Well, this is where we're starting our sermon. So thank you. Blessed be the God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies. And somebody read it with me. The God of all company. Yes. Thank God. Amen. I look around here and I can see people who faced ordeals that they never thought they would face. Amen. They lost a husband or a wife or a child or sickness or something that happened. You know, we never play the way. No, that right. can't. Right. It can't Amen. take our hope away. Nope. And it can't take the love we have one for another the love we have for you. The love we have for you, too. I know that. <laughs> Don't you get me started. <laughs> <laughs> Who comforteth us is there anybody here that's ever felt the comfort of the Holy Ghost? Oh, yes. Yes, yes Lord. I mean, it could have been a financial a disaster or a disappointment or something that didn't work out. I, I, I can't tell you how many men and women I've known over the years that ended up divorced and one of them didn't want it, but you, know, you can't make somebody else do what you want them to. How I many knows you don't have control over anybody and really not even over yourself unless the Lord helps you, you can't yes, keep it together. Right. Amen. But he comforts us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort them that are in any trouble by the comfort with wherewith we ourselves are comforted. Everything you've ever been through, God has allowed you to have a testimony to be able to help somebody that's getting to that. They hadn't got there yet, but when they get there, you'll be able to say, you know, I've been here, uh, I've done this, and, and God's going to help you, and God's going to strengthen you. You're going to make it through. Now, we're, we're, we've done the possible. We're still knowing that God is yes, able to do indeed. the impossible, yes, able to do exceedingly yes. and abundantly. Yes. And abundantly. Woo. Yes. Above all that we can ask or even think. Here's what you got to do when you face trouble. The main thing is you don't bow your head and run around whining about it. You hold your head up. Oh, you'll have your moments. You'll have your times when it'll overwhelm you, but you lift up your head, and when you lift up your head, he'll lift up your heart, and he'll strengthen you, and he'll help you, and God's going to guide us. 
Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. How many believes it's a mighty hand? Yes, it is. And hallelujah. And I'll tell you, you can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth you. Amen. And there is no uh, except in there. It doesn't say you can do some things. It says you can do all things. So whatever life lays at your doorstep. How many has had at least one thing in your life that you wouldn't have chosen? Oh, yeah. yeah, oh yeah. Well, I think it's you better. Yep. You know, we, we don't get to choose. Life just shows up. Yes. And things in life just shows up. And, uh, you know, we can't uh, determine how our children will turn out or our grandchildren. Right. Or we had all my children and grandchildren together last night. We do our Christmas after Christmas because everybody's got somewhere else to go at Christmas time. And uh, it was good to see them all and be together with them, but there's complications in some of them's lives. Yeah. I got a grandson. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Somebody say, God's got all things under his control. Yes, God's got all things under his control. I still believe he's able to open doors no man yes. can shut, yes. shut yes. doors no man can open. I believe he's able to create out of nothing something. Yes. I believe he's able to make what appears to be an impossible situation just disappear yes. and go away. And I believe that he's able to give you grace to go through things if, you, if he chooses to allow you to go through it. Amen. You can go through it. His grace is sufficient. Amen. His grace will guide you. His grace will direct you. If you'll humble yourself under his hand, when the time comes, he'll exalt you. He'll get you up. Yes. Susan said it herself early on. You know, she's a winner either way. We want to keep her here as long as we can. I do. I know you do too. And we're praying to that end. But if, if, if she walks through the valley of the shadow of death, guess what? He'll be there with her. Amen. And she won't walk that time alone, nor will I, nor will you. We won't be sad because we where she's at. We'll be sad because she's not with us. But we won't sorrow like people that don't have any hope. That's right. We won't act like somebody that just don't know what went on. Right. Let me tell you, if, if I have a stroke and fall on the floor or my heart quits and I fall out here this morning before I hit the floor, I'll be with Jesus. Yes. Amen. And if I, yes. I'm a winner. Amen. Cast all your care of on him. One fellow said to me one time, well, you know, I don't know bother God with every little thing. Yeah. Well, you just insulted God because He cares for you. Yes, He does. He wants you to cast every little care upon Him. Matter of fact, He told you be anxious for nothing. Yes. Amen. Another place it said be careful for nothing. In other words, quit worrying about stuff and fretting about stuff. And what am I going to do? How am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? Here's what you need to say. I'm going to trust in the Lord with all my might, and I'm not going to lean to my own understanding, right. but in all my ways, my hardships, my troubles, my trials, I'm going to acknowledge Him. Would you acknowledge Him right now? Yes. And would you just tell Him, God, I believe you're bigger than anything yes. that I can see or I can't see. Things I know and things that are unknown. Yes. Amen. Things we don't have any idea about. You know, you got to be careful in life that you don't get presumptuous and go off half cocked and do things that I've heard people say, Well, I feel like the Lord wants me to do this and so well. Let me tell you, you don't want to live by feeling. That's right. You want to live by faith. Amen. And let me tell you, you can test God. If God's really got something he wants you to do, he'll aggravate you to death till you, yes. till you give in and surrender and do it. But don't just say, now God, here I am. You've got to help me. Huh. We fuss about Peter stepping out of the boat and walking on the water as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus and when he started seeing the waves and the storms, he sunk. Well, I'll tell you this, nobody else got out of the boat. Amen. 
Amen. Everybody else stayed in the ship. Yep. They didn't they did say, well, Lord, let us all come out there. Nobody was wanting to get out of the boat. Peter at least got out of the boat. Indeed he did. But Peter learned the lesson. You've got to keep your eyes on Jesus. Yes. You can't, you can't look around at the waves and the storms yeah. and the trials that life throws at you. Has anybody besides me ever been broke? <laughs> I've been broke. I couldn't pay attention. You know, I just, I, I'd have had to borrow money to broke even. You know, I just, uh, I didn't know where it was coming from. But I'll tell you this, I've never gone hungry. You didn't tell that, did you? You, you knew that without me telling you. you, you could, it was obvious, wasn't it? I've never been hungry. He said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed out begging for bread. Amen. Yeah. He's always provided. Yes, he does. As a matter of fact, he's always provided more than enough. Amen. Amen. Be sober. And basically what that tells you is don't get intoxicated by your circumstances or by the things going on around about you. How about the evening news? You want a good case of depression, tune in. <laughs> you know, that, 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 can, that can break you down. And, uh, you know, it, one channel's this way and one's that way and one's pro this and the other one's pro that. And here's the thing about it, it doesn't matter what they do up there. You know, the government shut down. If you hadn't heard that, it hadn't affected me yet. It probably won't affect me. Because, it, you know, it'll, it'll all be over in a little bit because most of the government's running about 25%. It and probably, probably we don't need 35% of it, so it's probably a good thing that 25 <laughs> said, well, maybe we're saving a little money. I don't know. I always, I always like it when they're in gridlock. Most people don't. They like to get things done, but I like gridlock because they're not doing stuff. And when they're not doing stuff, things go pretty good. When they start doing stuff, that's when we get in trouble. You know, they're, they're passing this, they're passing that. So. And then he said, be vigilant. Yes. It's not a time to let up any time. Be vigilant. Stay at it. Stay at it when things go good. Stay at it when things go bad. Stay at it when you understand. Stay at it when you don't understand. When people ask you those questions that you don't have answers for, stay at it. Know him whom you have believed and be persuaded he's able to keep that which you've committed to him against that day. Why? Because the devil, your adversary, the devil, has a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. Does anybody ever watch them National Geographic shows where they so see that big herd of zebras or water buffalo or some of them and you see the lions over there on the side oh, yeah. and they're prowling around and they're scouting them out and they're waiting for one to get separated over by himself a weak one a young one one that can't defend himself and they'll go get him yep. as soon as they see a weak one well that's what the devil's trying to do the first thing he likes to do is separate you from the fellowship Amen. Yep. Over these 47 years that I've been in ministry, I've watched him work that work so many times, and he deceives people. First thing he does is separates them from the house of God. Yeah. They'll start laying out of the church. Yeah. They'll lay out a little here and a little there, and it gets increasing, and pretty soon it's almost non-existent. They'll start giving up. Say they were teaching a class, or they were doing this or doing that. They'll start giving up things, and pretty soon they'll back right out the door. They'll end up backslidden and won't know how they got there and they sure won't know how to get back. He said, don't forsake the assembly yourself together as the manner of some is, no matter what going on in your life. He didn't say that part. I said that. He said, don't forsake the assembly yourself together as the manner of some is, but do it so much more as you see that day approaching. Yes. Somebody said to me, well, that girl in the emergency room, and I said, well, I don't think I have to go to church. And I said, well, I believe you do. Uh, I believe you. I, if you're going to be obedient, you do. Mm -hmm. If you're going to follow the word of the Lord, you do. And how many knows that to obey is yes. better yes. than sacrifice? Yes. You know, it ain't what you've done or the good deeds or the good thoughts you had or how nice you were to somebody. It's whether or not you obeyed mm -hmm. the word of the Lord. 
The devil's out to divide you. He wants to separate you. He wants to, he wants to penetrate your weak area. Well, tomorrow, we got to read Malachi in the last chapter of Revelation, and we've completed the whole Bible this year. And the good news is we get to start over, or read it some other way, because a steady diet of the Word of God yes. is what keeps me afloat. Amen. Yes. I don't know about you, but it's what keeps me afloat. Yes. I can't tell you how many dark hours I've had when the Word of God just come flooding in and gave me the comfort and the peace that I needed to make it through that hour. Amen. 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 I told you about it a long time ago. I've told you several times, but when I pastored in Tampa, I had just got some devastating news, news that, that as far as I was concerned was going to end my ministry and end everything. And all of a sudden, a man come through the doors of that little church. I was there all alone walked down the aisle and opened the Bible on the communion table and said, the Lord sent me here from Chicago to give you this verse. Mm. He gave me Deuteronomy 32, uh, 27, which says, the eternal God is thy refuge. And underneath, underneath are the everlasting arms. How about that? Hallelujah. How many believe God's holding you up? Yes, he is. Oh, you'll make it. Yeah, this world's going to get worse and worse. Jesus said, am I even going to find faith when I come? That's how bad it's going to get. He said, wicked man and evil men and seducers are going to wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. If you think politics is bad, it's going to get worse. If you think uh, ungodly lifestyles and all that stuff that you see shoved in your face is going to get better, it's not. If you see uh, all... Things that they talk about nowadays, when I was a kid, they wouldn't even mention in polite society. But they do now. There's the, we forgot how to blush. There's nothing that shocks us or stuns us anymore. We're not, a, we're not amazed by all of these things. Who'd ever thought there'd be people standing on a street corner naked protesting you eating a hamburger? Right. That's what Peter does. That's what all that group does. You know that and they're they're kind of mild to some of them nowadays. But uh, you got to realize the devil's trying to find your weakness. He's yes, looking indeed. for a hole in your faith. He's testing you and he's trying you. He's doing like he done to Job. He said, uh, God said, if you considered my servant Job, and he said, Oh, just let me get at him a little while. You know, I I'll, I'll take care of him. So anyway. You've got to resist the devil. Everybody likes to say, well, if you resist the devil, he'll flee from you. You might ought to read the whole verse. Right. It'll help you to read the whole verse. It says, submit yourself therefore unto God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. See, he's not fleeing from you. He's looking over your shoulder and saying, well, God's with him. Yep. God's right. standing That's for him. Right. God's, God's his defense. God's his shield. God's got him covered. And he ain't coming near him. Amen. He done, he done kicked him good and stomped his head. He's a defeated foe. Yep. Amen. He says, resist steadfast in the faith. There's a lot of things about my faith that I still don't have a solid answer on. I just believe him. I just take him at his word. I don't have to dot all the I's and cross all the T's. We used to have a young man here who wanted me to give him a scientific uh, explanation of God. I said, well, I don't know if I can do that, but I can tell you this, anything that's scientific, God created and God <laughs> right. made. So, you know, there, there's your answer. Well, where did God come from? They say, well, God's always been and always will be. Yeah. We don't understand eternity because eternity doesn't have a beginning, doesn't have an end. There is no time in eternity, and God fills eternity, and thank God He incorporated me in that by giving me the gift of God, which is eternal life through His Son, Jesus Christ, my Lord. Knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. If you turn on the newscast any day, you'll hear somebody got shot. Yep. Somebody overdosed. Somebody was killed in a car wreck. Yep. Uh, somebody uh, had some kind of disaster happen to them. 
A 26-year-old reporter this week died of the flu, 26 years old. Uh, she, she was seen on uh, different channels different times. She worked for the Federalist, but uh, she went home from a group of people she was with, told she wasn't feeling well. They found her the next day unresponsive, died of the flu. Nobody expects to die of the flu, but people die of the flu every day. Uh, they, they're they probably having them happen right here in the Villages Hospital every day. You got to resist the devil in the faith. And you got to know that everybody has problems. I used to have a lady that was in her late 80s, and she sung a special in my church in Arizona, which said, I have somebody with me to bear my heavy load. I know that he is with me every day. Yes. And that's what you need to know, that you have somebody with you. You're not walking alone, living alone, or making decisions alone, and neither are we. These afflictions are accomplished to everybody in the world. If you know anybody that's never had any trouble, I'd like to meet them. Right. I'd like to talk to them a moment. But everybody has trouble. But everybody don't have somebody that's going to guide them through and bring them through that trouble. What shall we say to these things? We read this verse. We sing this verse. We talk about this verse. If God be for us. If you believe God's with you, somebody praise him right now. And say, I believe God is for me. God is on my side. Amen. He that spared not his own son. If he loved you enough when you were a ranked sinner to send Christ to die for you. Yes. And delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him freely give us all things? Hallelujah. How many believe he's going to finish what he started yes. in yes, you? Yes. It's him that worketh in you, both to will and to do his good pleasure. You're his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. You're his masterpiece. Sometimes he has to put you back on the potter's wheel and take a mar out or a, a, a bad place out and remake you, but he's still working on you. He's still bringing you back to the main point. See, Jesus isn't just a part of my faith. He is my faith. He's not a part of my life. He is my life. In him I live and move and have my very being. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. I don't have to worry about what they say, or what they think, or what they say is going to happen, or what their prescription for me is. I mean, knows God's got the final word in your life. Yes, indeed. No matter what man says, God has the final answer. Yes. Amen. He yes. is in control. Yep. And we're trusting him and believing he's going to guide us through. It is God that justifies. Doesn't matter what somebody says about you or what they think about you. That's right. All there's <laughs> maybe maybe you hadn't found this out, but I found out years ago everybody don't like me. <laughs> what a heartbreak. You know what? I just love them in spite of themselves. That's right. Amen. I just love them anyhow. That's right. I don't have to subject myself to their views, but I can just go on. You know, I, you know what? Only people that can hurt you is people you care about. Mm -hmm. You know them guys going up and down the road out there? I don't know them, don't know nothing about what they're doing and whatever they're saying about this church as they drive by don't affect me at all. Nope. all right. well, people say hurtful things, and they do hurtful things, and, and they break your heart. But you have to just keep on keeping on and looking unto Jesus as the author and the finisher of your faith. Who is he that condemneth? Well, wait a minute. Ain't but one that died for me who has the right to judge me. Amen. It's Christ that died. So here's the good news. Yea, rather, he is risen again. Somebody say he's alive. He's, he's alive. alive. He's at the right hand of God who also maketh intercession for us. Yes. 
You know, we're, we're asking a lot of people to pray, and a lot of people are praying, but the good thing is Jesus is making intercession yes, that he is. according to the will of God. Amen. Amen. Yes. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Amen. He said who, but then he names a lot of what's. What about that? He says who, then he names a lot of what's. Shall tribulation? Mm -hmm. Ah, you've been through that before, haven't you? And you've had a few tribulations, things that you didn't understand. Distress, if you ain't had none of that, you'll get some. <laughs> Persecution, or famine, nakedness, or peril, or so As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long, we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Ever since you gave your life to Jesus, the devil ramped it up. He sent every demon and devil of hell by your way to try to discourage you. He don't want to move you a whole lot. He just wants to move you a little bit off course. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're laying out this building and you get a quarter of an inch off on that end uh, to this end, the time you get there, if that quarter inch will be multiple feet, you'll, yeah. you'll, you'll really be off. It's got to be right on. If you're doing a plumb line, Jesus is the plumb line. Yes. Amen. A plumb line is the truest thing there is. I mean, you can have all kinds of things to measure with, but if the wind ain't blowing, you can get the plumb bob to hold still. A plumb line is a, you measure off that plumb line and you've got a good line. Mm -hmm. Amen. Jesus is the plumb line. Nay, in all things. Things you know about, things you don't even know is coming yet. I mean, it was yesterday is gone. Amen. Yeah. Well, you know, there's a few yesterdays I'd call back and I wouldn't have said what I said and I wouldn't have done what I'd done and, and I would have altered some things about yesterday, but I can't and it's done. I can ask his forgiveness. I can get ready and I can go forward and I can go on. Nay, in all things, we're more than conquerors. Not just conquerors, more than conquerors. Hallelujah. Through him that loved us. For I am persuaded. And this word persuaded means I'm past further persuaded. I've been persuaded to the point that I can be persuaded no more. I've come to the final settled conclusion. And that's where you need to be right now. I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. How about that? That pretty well covers it all, doesn't it? That just means you can go through anything, endure anything, overcome anything. If you'll just keep your faith, how many's come this far by faith? Yes. Amen. And if you're going to make it home, you're going to have to keep pressing on, pressing on, and reaching forward. Amen. For all things for your sake, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving re redound to the many. Uh, Redound, thanksgiving to many, redound to the glory of God. Let me tell you, if you want to show your faith, the best time for you to show your faith is when hell is camped on your doorstep. Amen. When troubles and trials are so deep around you that you don't see a way out, hold your head up and praise God regardless. Praise God in spite of the circumstances. Don't tell anybody ever when they ask you how you're doing you say well under the circumstances get out from under the circumstances right. mm -hmm. climb up on top of them say i'm more than a conqueror through him that loved me i'm not in any very good circumstances right now but my god reigns we sung that this morning didn't we yeah do we believe it yeah my god reigns yes. amen so there are no circumstances which life can throw at me 
Matter of fact, it says one place that he's given us everything we need that yeah. pertains to life and godliness. Uh -huh. You didn't know it was coming, but here it is. And God said, I got that covered. Yeah. I'm going to lead you through this. I'm going to take care of that. Yeah. Paul said, Lord, you, I, I know we've already talked about it, but, you know, I've got this thorn in my flesh here. I went up to the big deliverance meeting and they didn't help me. I sent off for the tapes and the books and they didn't help me, but you know, Lord, I still got this thorn in the flesh. Yeah. And let me paraphrase. It's risky paraphrasing God, but I'm going to paraphrase him here. He finally said, shut up, Paul. <laughs> I know all about that. Mm -hmm. Yes, he does. I mean, knows God knows where you're yes. at. He knows what's ahead of you. It'll get you through anything and everything. Amen. Somebody raise your hands and say thank you that yesterday is gone. Yes. And tomorrow is in your hands. Amen. It's in your hands. Amen. The outward man perishes. I find that out every day. I look in the mirror and try to find how to arrange what few hairs <laughs> I've got to cover off all the glossy spots so it doesn't flag you out there. Susan was supposed to start losing her hair in about three weeks. I told her, well, it's my chance. I've always told her I want to shave my head. She said, yeah, but you've got to maintain it after you do that. So we'll see. Uh, I'm planning on shaving my head in about three weeks. If you see a big shiny spot up here, that's me. <laughs> but the inward man, the outward man, I, I mean, he's got an ache you didn't have a few years ago. Or a pain he has. You know, maybe some of you is as foolish as me. I guess thinking about what I used to do, I think I'd still do it. Uh -huh. Yeah. And some of those things I can still do. It's just what used to take me two hours takes me two weeks. Uh -huh. <laughs> I can still get out. It's the get back up that's the rough part. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment. How many knows life is only a flash in the pan anyway? Amen. It don't last long. Worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal way of glory. How many really believe heaven is a good place to go? Oh, yes. How many believe there's some great things out there for us? Oh, yes. I hadn't seen, ear hadn't heard, neither hath it entered the hearts of man, but God hath revealed it unto us by His Spirit. It's real. Yeah. It's not a myth. That's right. While we look not on the things which are seen, and this is our problem, we have a tendency to look at what we see and react to it and act like we're helpless against it yeah. and that we're hopeless. But the things which are not seen, let me start that again. While we look not on the things that are seen but on the things that are not seen, for the things that are seen are temporal, right. are temporary. But the things which are not seen are eternal. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Somebody say amen. Amen. But the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Sent Timotheus, our brother and minister of God, our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ to establish you, to comfort you concerning your faith. Amen. Keep on keeping on. Stay with it. Don't give up. See, they were upset because Paul was in jail. They were saying, well, how in the world can Paul be over there in jail? You know, he's a great man of God. How can he be locked up? How can he be going through all this trouble? And Timothy went by and said, hey, when he was here with you, he told you it, he was going to have to suffer. You're going to have to suffer. There's going to be some hard times, but keep on keeping on. Amen. That 
No man should be moved by these afflictions for yourselves. Know that we are appointed there unto. Did you think, did it enter your mind that when you got saved, the devil was going to say, whoa, back it off. Mm -hmm. Giving up on that when they're saved. Oh, my goodness. No, he said, this group of demons over here, you go after that one. As a matter of fact, I'm going to use some good church members too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. How about that? He does. Some people get used by the devil and don't even know they've been used by That's the devil. Right. Come on. True. Oh my. I'll let you figure that one out. For verily when we were with you, we told you before that we should suffer tribulation even as it come to pass, and you know. As a matter of fact, I believe it's the 17th chapter of Acts, Paul said, we all must through great tribulation enter the kingdom of God. What did Paul say? I have fought the fight. Yes. I have kept the faith. It ain't been a breeze. It ain't been easy. He was beat 39 times more than once. He was stoned and left for dead. He was let down over a wall in a basket and escaped by the skin of his teeth. But thanks be to God. Let's thank yeah. him. Thank right Lord. Thank yeah. thank Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Which giveth us the victory. You know, you get them things in the mail that says you may already be a winner. Yeah. Well, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not expecting one of them to come through for me. But I read the book and I am a winner. Yes. Amen. Amen. I've already won. Amen. Right. Matter of fact, our last chapter of Revelation will be tomorrow. The end of the story. Yep. But don't add to it, don't take away from it. Amen. Everything in this book is going to come to pass. Don't you change it. Don't you alter it. Just believe it. Wait for it. Yep. Trust it. Therefore, my beloved, be steadfast. Get yourself planted. I don't know about you, but I'm going to serve God. Amen. If everybody I know quits, I tell you this, but there's a lot of congregations that you wouldn't know you within the Church of God anymore. Oh, I know that's true. And it's not just the Church of God, it's the nope. Assembly of God, and it's yep. the Baptist, the Methodist, and all of them. Yep. The Methodist Church right down the world, the road here, I don't know the girl, but let me tell you how the Methodist Church does it. Every pastor preaches the same message yep. on Sunday because they send it out from headquarters and tell them what to preach. Yep. Headquarters, they never sent me a message that if they did, I wouldn't preach. I get mine from headquarters all right. His Amen. Amen. I get mine hot off the presses. Yeah. Amen. There's books you can buy. It's got a sermon for every day and four or five for special occasions. <laughs> I've never been tempted to use them anyway. If God don't put it in here, I can't put it out there like that. Be like reading you a story. I might as well read Mary had a little lamb whose fleece was white as snow. <laughs> Mary did have a lamb, didn't she? Yes. But not the one they're talking about. Amen. Trust in the Lord. We already read that one. Or I already quoted it. In all your ways. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope. A lively hope. Yeah. A lively hope. A hope that's alive. A hope that's still ongoing. Yeah. It's been around for several thousand years and it's still going. Amen. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. How many believes the tomb is empty? 
It is. Yeah. Amen. It is. You know, there's been an argument for years over which tomb it was, whether it was the garden tomb or the one at the church of the basilica. The good news is you ain't need a one. Amen. So it don't it don't matter which right. what they say. You know, he's just not there. That's what they what the angel said to him that day. He's not here, he's risen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And look what you've been called to. Now listen to this. Pay attention. Wake up, everybody. I want you to hear this. You've been called to an inheritance. Yes. Incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away. It's there. It's not going anywhere. Reserved in heaven for you who are kept, who are kept by the power of God through faith and to salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Mm -hmm. The only part of me that hadn't been redeemed is this old body and it's coming. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'll have a new body, I'll have a new life. Now thanks be unto God, mm -hmm. which always, always, Cause us to triumph in Christ, making manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. Did you know that people are reading you like they're reading the gospel? They're watching your life. If you act up, if you act up, that's what they think of Christians. They remember you. Be careful. You're not representing you. You're representing him. Be careful. Yep. There hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man, but God is faithful. Yes, he is. Say it out loud. God he is, is faithful. faithful. Say it again. God, God is, is faithful. faithful. Wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, will, will the tip with the temptation also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Amen. Amen. He does, that's true. Join us tonight at 5 p.m. And service at 6 p.m. Have a blessed. We'll be having a fellowship.